Engineer, me too. First year of engineering, everyone asks you about your dating life. Second year, which fest you're a part of. Third year, everyone's asking you, tech or non-tech, gate or cat, India or abroad. And you're sitting and thinking, what do I even do? Because nobody's explaining what your life looks like after making these big choices. They're just throwing exam names at you. GRE, CAT, GMAT. Here's the truth. This isn't about picking an exam. You're choosing between two completely different lives. I used to be so confused and anxious and I'm guessing you are too. So in the next 10 minutes, let's figure this out. Not based on what sounds impressive, but based on who you actually are. And by the end, you'll know your answer. Let's go. Act 1. Understanding the real choice. Here's the problem. Everyone's talking about GATE, GRE, CAT, GMAT. But nobody's telling you what you'll actually be doing five years from now. Let's make this crystal clear. The technical path. It makes you stay in engineering. You take GATE to get into IT for M-Tech or PSU jobs in India. Or GRE to go abroad for MS in say USA, Germany, Canada. Either way, you'll remain an engineer. You're solving technical problems, writing code, designing systems, typing away in cubicles or working in labs. Five years later, you're a senior engineer, a technical lead, a systems architect. You're still deeply technical, just at a much higher level. The non-technical path means you leave engineering behind completely. You're not doing anything related to the codes or circuits you learned in engineering. You have built a whole new world. You're making business decisions. You are managing people, working with clients across the globe. Same engineering degree but two people whose daily lives look absolutely nothing alike. One person spends their day solving technical problems alone in their computer. The other spends their day surrounded by people in meetings, convincing people, managing stakeholders, making PPTs. Both have the potential to be very successful, very well paid, but completely different lives. And here's what nobody tells you. Once you pick a path, switching becomes almost impossible. So let's figure out which side do you belong to and I'm going to give you a framework that makes it very simple. Act 2. The Personality Divide Tech and non-tech aren't just different career paths. They require fundamentally different personality types to thrive. People who love tech, they're energized by solving puzzles, by making things work. People who love non-tech, like me, are energized by variety, by human interaction, by influencing outcomes through people. They get restless doing the same technical work every single day. Isolation feels suffocating. They want their impact to be visible in how people make decisions and not just how a code runs. Neither is better. But forcing yourself to be someone you're not that's career suicide. And I have seen brilliant engineers miserable in MBA and vice versa. Pause this video right now. Actually answer these questions. Screenshot this. Because your personality is the foundation. Everything else that is money, lifestyle, career growth only matters if the daily work doesn't make you miserable. This by the way isn't a quiz. Treat it like a mirror. Be very honest with yourself. Act 3. The exam reality. Okay, let's get practical because half of you are sitting with thick prep books right now wondering which exam to crack. Let's talk about GATE. 11 lakh students took it last year. Only 5% got into top IITs for M-Tech. Another 10% got PSU jobs. That means 85% didn't get what they wanted. And what does GATE test? Your engineering depth data structures, algorithms, thermodynamics, circuits, everything from your four foundation years of engineering, but deeper and tougher. If you hated your engineering subjects, gate prep will be torture. Six to 10 months of going back to the concepts you probably haven't touched since your semester exams, let alone if you got a KT and somehow escaped it. Now coming to CAT. 3.3 lakh students. Only 1.5% got into top IIMs. The competition is brutal. But here's what's different. CAT doesn't test your engineering knowledge. It tests aptitude like math, logical reasoning, reading comprehension. Your branch doesn't really matter. Computer science, mechanical, electronics, everyone starts from the same place. It's testing how fast you can think and process information, not what you studied previously. So the real difference? 
Gat asks, how well do you know your engineering? Gat asks, how well can you think and reason quickly? Both need months of prep, but they are testing fundamentally different things. And this matters because the exam you choose leads to the career you will live. Screenshot this. Which exam pattern makes you think, I could do this, I could crack this? Versus, man, that sounds exhausting. Because you are going to spend months preparing and you better pick the one that doesn't make you want to quit every single day. Act 4. The Money Truth Let's talk money. Because everyone says, follow your passion. But you're also thinking, which one pays more? That's not shallow, that's practical. Here's what actually happens. In year one, MA graduates start higher. Non-tech, 18 to 25 lakhs starting. Non-tech abroad, 1 crore to 1.5 crores. Compare that to tech. In India, 12 to 18 lakhs. Or abroad, starting at 80 lakhs to 1 crore 16 lakhs, but with 60 to 80 lakh of loans. So, year one, non-tech wins on the starting salary. But, Watch what happens next. In year 5, technical specialists are at a 35 to 55 lakh. These are the really good ones, like the tech nerds, those who become experts in AI, cloud, cyber security. On the other hand, MBA folks, 50 to 75 lakhs on average. But if you make it to senior management, if you're a partner or a director, you could be at 1 or 2 crores too. But most don't make it here. Here's what the data actually says. Both paths can make you rich, but the growth pattern is different. The technical path is steadier, more predictable. You get better at your skills and your salary grows simultaneously. You don't need to play politics. Whereas in the non-tech path, it's kind of variable. If you're brilliant with people, if you can network and navigate office politics, you shoot up fast. But if you're average in that, your growth kind of stalls. I've met MBA grads stuck at 30 lakhs for years because they couldn't climb the management ladder. So pause, screenshot, think about it. Do you want steady, predictable growth or are you willing to bet on yourself in a high risk, high reward scenario? Both are valid, but you need to know which pressure you can handle. Money is not about the amount, it's about the kind of pressure that you enjoy handling. Act 5, The Lifestyle Reality now, let me show you what your actual life looks like because that might matter more than salary too. In a technical career, you wake up, you're at your desk by 9.30, headphones on, deep work, you're coding, designing, solving problems. Your stand-up meeting is 15 minutes. Rest of the day, you are alone with your work, with your code. By 6.30, you close your laptop. You're done. Your evenings are yours. Weekends are actually free. Whereas in a non-tech career, you wake up, you check emails even before you're out of bed because your clients are in a different time zone. By 8.30, you are in formals, ready for back-to-back -back meetings. Client calls, strategy meeting, presentation review, another client call. You're making PowerPoint presentations in between meetings. You eat lunch on a call. By 7, you're exhausted. But You've got a presentation to finish for tomorrow, so you work till 10. Weekends, you are often preparing for Monday. Work never really stops. Both are exhausting, just different kinds of exhaustion. Technical work exhausts you mentally because there's deep focus, complex problems, brain is fried by the end of the day. But it is predictable. You have boundaries. Non-tech exhausts you emotionally and mentally. Managing people, reading the room, navigating politics, switching 10 contexts every hour. Your work bleeds into your personal life constantly. But it's variety, it's new people, it's exciting opportunities. Every day is different. Screenshot this. Be brutally honest. Which exhaustion can you handle and actually enjoy? Because you are going to live this life every day for 30 to 40 years. Pick the wrong one and all that money won't matter. You'll just be rich but miserable. This one decides your happiness more than your salary ever will. Act 6. The Decision Framework Five questions, answer them honestly. Question 1. When you accomplish something, where does your satisfaction come from? Is it when the code works? When the design is elegant? When the problem is solved? Even if nobody really sees it? Or do you need people to recognize it? tell you, hey, you did a good job and give you credit. If it's internal satisfaction, your tech. 
But if you need external validation, you're non-tech. Question 2. Someone gives you a vague problem with no clear answer. Say, improve customer experience. Do you get frustrated and want specific requirements like metrics, constraints? Or do you get excited about the freedom to explore different solutions? Frustration with such ambiguity means tech. Excitement means non-tech. Question 3. Imagine your ideal workday five years from now. Are you at your desk working on a complex technical challenge? Building something, mentoring a junior engineer on technical concepts or are you in a conference room presenting to senior management talking to clients leading a team meeting making strategic decisions visualize it pause the video if you want to which scene energizes you more that's your answer right there question four after a full day of meetings and group work are you exhausted and desperate for alone time to recharge or are you quite energized and the thought of sitting alone kind of sounds depressing if people drain you you are tech if people energize you you are non-tech Question 5. Why do you want to do higher studies? Is it because everyone's doing it and you feel like you should? Or because you don't have a job yet? Because your parents expect it out of you? Or because you genuinely want to learn more? If it's any of the first reasons, stop. Don't do higher studies just because you don't know what else to do. That's the worst reason to take out a loan or spend two more years studying something which you don't even like. But if you do want to learn more, which of these excite you more? Go back to all the analysis points in the video. If most things point to tech, your path is probably GATE or GRE. Or if it is non-tech, your path might be CAT or GMAT. There might be unique cases of like 50-50, then you might be good for hybrid roles, say product management, data analytics, technical consulting, all of that. Self-analysis checkpoint number five, your final score. Okay, I hope you've made this one decision about tech, non-tech. But another awaits you, my friend. It's not that easy. There is a question about India or abroad, as in GATE or GRE, CAT or GMAT. Don't worry, we've got you. We have made videos on those two. They'll be available here. You can also check them out in the description. Look, I know it's scary. You're in your early 20s, making a decision, and it's going to affect your next 10 years, maybe your entire life. But here's what I want to tell you. The unhappy ones choose based on what looked impressive, what their parents wanted, what their friends were doing. The happy ones chose based on who they actually are. So stop asking which is better, start asking which is better for me. Because both paths work. Both can make you very successful, both can make you rich, but only one will let you be yourself every single day. And that is not luxury, that is everything. In the description, there's also a complete decision framework PDF. Download it. It has detailed breakdowns, salary projections, questions to ask mentors. Use it. Also, comment below. Have a discussion. You might help others out. You can even ask questions to the Skillhouse team and we will get back to you. We read all the comments. Anyways, you've got this. Trust yourself and make the right decision. I'm Mahima and you're watching Beer by Skillhouse. See you in the next one.